Good morning, everybody. I really trust that you um, have had a good night's rest and woken up refreshed this morning. Uh, also pray that you've enjoyed that uh, piece of music as you've come on the live this morning. And I see that you have been greeting one another and saying hello as I have been quickly putting things into place to be able to come on the live this morning. So welcome, welcome to each and every one of you on this morning's live from my home in Cape Town, South Africa, to your home, wherever you find yourself at this moment. Lockdown has maybe not been easy, but it's also given us this wonderful opportunity to be the church of Jesus in each other's homes, as we uh, use social media to keep us connected. So sorry, it seems that somebody has rung the bell and I'm hoping that one of the children will go to the door. But would you give me one moment? I'm so sorry for the interruption. Okay, I'm so sorry about that interruption. Uh, there was somebody at the front gate and it's all dealt with. So good morning, Jonathan Isaacs, um, Apostle Isaacs. So good to see you online this morning. Uh, greetings to you, your wife and your wonderful family. Good to see Philippa and Pat Price, Carmen, uh, all these wonderful people. <clears throat> that God has brought together on the in the online space. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, lovely that there are 26 of you, of you on the live already and uh, others will come on as we're going along. So let's start by opening in prayer. Let us pray together. Father, thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your love that is from everlasting to everlasting. We are grateful, so grateful, to be alive, to have a purpose on our lives. We pray for each and every family that has lost loved ones, friends, family members during this very difficult time. I ask you, Father, to comfort them to encourage them, to hold them tight, to wrap your arms around them, to sustain them as their lives are changed, as their hearts are being pierced with much um, sorrow. And we thank you, Father, that your ways are above our ways. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome this morning. Come and reveal the Father. Come and reveal the Father to us in an outstanding manner. For that is your purpose in the earth and your commission from heaven. We welcome you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so... Against all odds, we are alive and well and have a purpose in the earth. If you are still here and alive and well, it's because the Father has a purpose for you. Therefore, do not shrink back, but hold firmly onto that that the Father has put on your life. And know that 
if he has called you, that he is able to keep you and present you and to do a mighty work in you and through you and that you are living in this important hour for the purposes of our God. And that purpose is that you have been called. And yesterday we looked at ministry unto the Lord, ministry unto, we, uh, I, and I gave you the heading as ministry unto the Lord, ministry unto the saints, ministry unto the lost. On the, um, I said that, release that word from a question that somebody had asked, are we all called to ministry? Are we all called to ministry? And I said, we are called to minister firstly unto the Lord. Then we are called to minister unto the saints, unto one another. And thirdly, we are called to minister unto the lost. And so yesterday we looked at Psalm 37 on how we minister unto the Lord, how we read the word back to the Lord and how we bless the Lord with our worship. Because I'm sure there's always that question in your head, in your heart, how can we mere mortals worship, no, minister unto God. And so the word of God says, even in the New Testament, when they asked about the law, then it was summed up in this statement. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul or being. And love your neighbor as yourself. And that these instructions sums up the whole law. Because who can rob somebody that you are exuding the love of heaven over? Who can be envious? Who can be spiteful? We even looked at Psalm, uh, sorry, at 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. That love is not spiteful and love is, does not withhold good and love is not puffed up. And so our first ministry is unto the Lord. And so we pray, I demonstrated how we pray this word back to the Lord. And so in opening this morning on how we're going to what is the next level, and that is ministering to one another. Just let's look at this opening here in Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him. I will trust. And so we get up and we open the word and we say good morning father god good morning papa daddy here we are and then we say our father uh, i want to to minister unto you this morning as i come into your presence thank you my father that this word psalm 91 has been recorded for my power edification and and that i can bring it before you this morning for you have said oh god remind me of my promises so now this morning father god i remind you that in the psalms in psalm 91 you have said by the inspiration of the holy spirit and recorded by man you have said that those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, 
Yes, my Father, you are the Most High. I thank you for being my, my hiding place. I thank you that because you are the Most High, that I am safe when I hide in you. And I want to not only dwell in your secret place, I want to abide. Sometimes we just check in and check out. But this psalm speaks about he who dwells and those that abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And if I dwell and if I abide in you, Almighty God, I can see according to your word that I will, the, the, the meditation of my mouth and the pronouncement of my, out of my heart will be that you are my refuge, that you are my fortress, that you are my God, and in you alone I trust. And you find yourself moving out of the place of woe is me, and where is God? To the place of saying, this is who you are to me, my God and my Father. And I will do not only dwell, but I will abide. Surely, verse 3 of Psalm 91 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Don't you for a minute believe that those of us that are in full-time ministry, ministering the word day in and day out, do not also have the enemy buffeting us with fear. When COVID-19 starts to touch and take out people that are close to us and people that we love, uh, there is a... Um, a place where you could slip into fear. But we remind the Lord as we minister unto him by the word, we say, Father God, this morning as I stand in your courts and in your presence, I thank you that you deliver me from the snare of the fowler. I remind you, O oh God, that perilous pestilence will not, a virus can be a perilous pestilence, that this virus will not be able to come against me. I thank you for your kindness, Father. I thank you for your all-encompassing love. I thank you. And then the Holy Spirit begins to nudge you about the word that is written in your heart. Not just the word that is written on the pages, but the word that is written in your heart. And he reminds you of Jeremiah 29. And you turn there as you are busy ministering the promises of God back to him. And you flip to that and you say, Oh Lord, I am reminded by the Holy Spirit of this word that was recorded by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit from your father heart. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, O oh God, that you know the thoughts that I am thinking towards you. So even when I am despairing and afraid, you know my thoughts, O oh Father. I can't come to you in my piousness and go, Almighty oh God, creator of heaven and earth, I want you to know, Almighty God. No, you know my fears. You know my anxieties. You know my every way. And I thank you and I minister back to you your word that you have assured me, O oh God, that you know my thoughts 
and the things that I think. And I thank you, Father, that your thoughts back to me, even when my thoughts are weak, it tells me in Jeremiah 29, 11, that your thoughts, even when my thoughts towards you are skewed and messed up, your thoughts towards me are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Your thoughts, my God, are thoughts of peace and not of evil. And so when the enemy comes in like a flood, you see, he reminds you, the Holy Spirit, of another scripture. And you could turn there and begin to dialogue with God. By the time you are finished ministering out of the depth of your being unto the Lord, the word that will never fail, and you remind him of his promises, you have built up a sure foundation in your life. For faith comes by hearing, and hearing what? The Word of God. And so as we recite the Word before Him, it builds us up in our most inner faith. I don't think any of us will forget, as we started this practice yesterday, and, um, in, uh, and we started in Psalm 37, you will remember tenants of that psalm forever because we stood up, we walked, we read it to the Lord. And so when somebody says, what keeps you? You'll go, go, you'll say, go and look at Psalm 37 because it was a, um, it was a, quickened word for the season that we find ourselves in and so psalm 37 yesterday was do not fret because of evil doers do not fret with every conspiracy that is going on and i want you to know that when things are good friends are a plenty when things are bad, you might not find somebody to stand in agreement with you. And that is when you pull on the sure word of God and you remind him and yourself. Because as you pray the word and read the word out loud, you are ministering that word back to the Spirit. To your spirit because it says faith by, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and so unfortunately unfortunately the concept of grace and freedom uh, pushes us further and further into let's just swing from the trees and see where we go let us return to our foundations in this time. Jesus Christ is your foundation. And the Bible says, be careful how you allow another man or woman to build on the foundation that you have been given that they need to weigh up what they're going to put on your foundation. That's why you have discernment, that we discern what is correct, that we are not pushed by a groundswell of good ideas. This is not a word of being critical or condemning, but weigh up what you eat Weigh up what you receive. I am amazed when people send this thing and that thing and that thing. You know what it really shows? It shows that people are desperate for a word 
that will tell them everything's going to be okay. Everything's, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Of course, in God, everything is going to be all right. But let's not be like sheep without a shepherd running around looking for tasty morsels to encourage us when we have an anchor, when we have a foundation. Jesus, Holy Spirit, Jesus and the Holy Spirit have not um, reneged on their commission. Jesus says, if you saw to the disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus says, I must become less so that the one that comes after me, which is the Holy Spirit, can, can, sorry, John the Baptist said, I must become less so the one that comes after me uh, will become the, the main feature. And then Jesus says, I need to go, but I will send you one that is my exact representation, which is the Holy Spirit. So I, we need to hold on to truth. Holy Spirit and Jesus have not reneged on the commission that they got from the Father. What was that commission? That Jesus came as a baby to the earth, was born in a body, and was um, tempted or subject to the same frailties and things that we go through and was able to demonstrate how to live, that he only did and followed and w worked on what he saw his father doing, that his uh, foundation was his heavenly father. So our foundation is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that we are encouraged to build a house upon the rock and not upon the sand. What does that look like? What does that look like? Train up your children in the way they should go, and in the end they will not depart therefrom. Building your <clears throat> excuse me, building your house speaks about you and your family will serve the Lord. What does it gain you to win the whole world and lose your own salvation, if that were possible? So now to this morning, I want to move on to the second point of this three-point message. Yesterday was how to minister unto the Lord, and I don't think you will ever forget it, how you can pick up your Bible that you can read the word and the Holy Spirit will lead you and he will re-establish in you a sure foundation from this word, from this word and from the living word. Because in, in John it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. When you read this word under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you're not only brushing with this black ink on white paper. You are brushing with the word that's become flesh and dwelt amongst us. It draws the presence of Almighty God. So our second ministry, once we have ministered unto the Lord, I don't know a priest that bumbles in to the presence of the, in the Holy of Holies without, a, um, without preparation. If you look at the model of the temple, it was a demonstration of how to enter the most holy place. And it started with an outer court and then it's 
got to that place where they washed their hands. They, they saw themselves in the laver, which was a bowl made with many mirrors. And that's why the word says, now we see as in a mirror, but the day will come that we'll see him face to face. Right now, there are things that we might even still see dimly as they looked and they washed. The picture might still have been dim, but the day comes when you see him face to face. And that face to face is not only when he returned, but already when they saw Jesus and he walked amongst them, he said, if you see me, you see the father. And so in the spirit, we behold him with unveiled faces. The reality of who he is, is phenomenal. It's life changing. So they would go into preparation and then the high priest would be sure that he took in a sacrifice which was a spotless lamb, no blemishes. It was taken out of the newborn lambs and it was put a ready, I'm talking about physical lambs, in the, in, into swaddling clothes. That's why Jesus came and it speaks about his swaddling clothes as the ones for all sacrifice. And so the priestly offering was inspected. Not any offering went into the Holy of Holy. And so when the priest got in to the Holy of Holies, it says that there were pomegranates and bells around his edge of his garment. They knew the priest was in there as those pomegranates and bells released a sound as the pomegranates and the bells moved against one another. And then as the sacrifice was accepted and the fire and the billows of smoke came out, they knew that they, they had been forgiven. But now we are covered by the once and for all sacrifice. We do not sacrifice yearly. But that little, that picture of that temple. If we minister at the beginning of our day unto the Lord, it is part of our preparation to be able to minister to the saints. We come filled, not with yesterday's manna, which had to be collected every day, but we come with the day's anointing because we have given unto God and received. There are so many things in living free that um, I, I see that somebody by the name of Laura asked a question. And Liz says, yeah, what about those who's, who love Jesus but have died from COVID? Yes, I agree, Laura. It is very hard. But we need to remember, absent from this body is present with the Lord. And do you know that Paul had had so many experiences in and out of the presence of God that he was wrestling whether he wanted to stay here or whether he wanted to be there. And he said, as much as I want to be ready with the Father in my eternal life, before your sake I remain. For us that are here, it's for the sake of those around us that we are here. 
and we cannot give up on life or on the life giver even in this time when there is much heartbreak i know that that is not a conclusive answer but i pray that it gives you some comfort that if we remain it's because god has called us to continue in this race who who is running a race goes and sits in the stand even though they can see the winning tape this is not the time to sit down we might be sitting down in our homes in COVID, but our spirit is surely alive and quickened so how do we minister to one another we minister to one another by encouraging one another to be to stand up we minister to one another by sending each other words of hope words of encouragement i had a dear friend this morning send me a psalm she said i want to read the psalm over you this morning as a word of encouragement and that I closed my eyes and I allowed that psalm to touch the deep places of my heart. It was not a prophetic word that I had to now weigh. I was able to close my eyes immediately and listen to that psalm, knowing that that psalm was a ready part of the canonized word of god that would stand sure and forever so we first of all build it minister to one another by this let the conversation of your mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you O god so what i bring from my mouth and out of my heart to you has to build you up has to encourage you has to bring you strength we are not here to break down we are here to build up our mission and calling in this day is to build up the walls that have been broken down in people's lives and so I can at any time, people say, but I didn't have a word for you. Of course you do. From, from Genesis to Revelations, you do have a word for each other. So today I would recite this over you as a word of encouragement. If I'm called to minister unto the saints, then I say to each one listening, saints of God, this is God's word. I want to minister to you. My ministry to you is not a ministry that has to be sanctioned by man. It is I'm qualified to minister to you if I build you up, if I encourage you, if I exhort you by the Holy Spirit and by the hearing of my, the Word of God. And so I want to minister to the saints. This is what I will do. I will go to the word of God and find the word that I want to minister to that saint that is weary. And they might contact me and say, please, do you have a way of encouraging me this day? And I will say, from Psalm 100, I want you to know, that the word of the Lord to you today, saints, is that we will, you will continue to make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. I'm ministering to you today, saints, that you will not be silent, that you will shout unto the Lord with much praise. I'm in Psalm 100 ministering unto you from this psalm. 
Then it says, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. I will say, children of God, that one that's become weak, go put on your worship music. The Lord wants to give you a breakthrough this morning, child of God. Saint, go and put on your music and begin to sing. Know that He is good so you can go there. You can go there with, um, uh, you can. Tell that saint, you can go to the presence of the Lord with boldness. With singing. Because he knows about you. And remind them that the word says, he made you. You are not of your own making. You are his. You are the from the sheep of his pasture. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And maybe you even send them a voice note. And you say to them, I decree over you this day, according to this psalm, my dear friend, that God is raising you to make a shout. My God is raising you to worship. My God has calling you, is, has called you to enter now, right now. This is your day of entry. What are you waiting for? Enter now in thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Ta I take the gagging off of your mouth of despair and discouragement that has kept you down. And I say to you that the Lord himself is raising a new standard for you to enter his gates. Because I want you to know, my dear friend, that God is good, good, oh so good. Oh so good. He's never failed you yet. He never will. His mercies are everlasting and His truth endures for all generations. That's where prophecy starts, in the Word of God. If you know the Word, if you know His character and His nature, because it is declared in the Word, your ministry unto the saints will bring assurance that they are called that they are chosen, that they are set apart. You will not be scratching your head. What can I give them to encourage them? For there will be a well spring inside of you of hope and expectation of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not just in the sweet by and by. So let us build one another up. We have looked at how to minister to, unto God. We have touched on how to minister. The first level is to encourage them by the word of God and the word of prophecy. There are more ways to build up the saints, which we will touch on as we continue. But that is it for today. I pray that you will have an awesome day, that the word of the, God, the Lord will sustain you and keep you in all your ways, that you will not be blowing around like a sailing ship with tattered sails, but that your sails have been raised for the breath of God to blow in the, into them. I speak to those that are in full-time ministry, heads of churches, 
and ministries that watch this recording or are online. If you have been called to lead in any way, and that means all of you because your first call is in your home, I want to encourage you today not to let go. Having put your hand to the plow, do not turn back. I know, like I know, like I know, that we have been called, we have been chosen, we have been even ordained by the Father before the foundation of the, of the world to continue to walk in this calling and lifestyle just because the church door is shut does not mean that your race is over. Awaken, 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 awaken. Let the breath of God breathe on you. I remind you of your call, for your call and election is sure and your heavenly Father is looking over you and looking after you. Has he not promised that if we will build his house, he will build ours? Father, we thank you for your promise. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you that goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives and that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Bless those that the Lord puts on your path and continue to bless. Do not hold back. Release the blessings of God over near and far children of God you are called to be a blessing you are a blessing walk in blessing release blessing and receive blessing in Jesus name amen I will see you tomorrow morning on word of life Facebook page May your eye be single and may your vision be set on things that are above. And may you run with vigor and steadfastness. The Lord is your great reward. God bless you and goodbye.